Hey everyone, today we are in Miami, Oklahoma, and this uh, is gonna be an interesting grave that we're gonna see. It is a Native American grave uh, from the nation of the Quapaws. I don't know if you've ever heard of them, but we'll explain a little bit more about them. But I wanted to show his grave because it is absolutely beautiful. And uh, you can look over here and see all the water. I guess they've had a lot of snow and rain up in here. This is the northeastern part of Oklahoma, the far northeastern part of Oklahoma. So I had to walk through some muddy water and stuff to kind of get over to where his final resting place is. But I felt that it was important and I feel like it's beautiful, so I wanted to show it. So this is the uh, grave that I wanted to show you. I'll show you a few others around here, just right around here because I find the names fascinating and there's also some great photos here. This is the Quapaw area here. Um, they actually have a town named Quapaw, but the Quapaw Reservation is up in this area. Great tribe. Um, unfortunately, they've had some hardships with some of the things that have happened to them. Of course, like any other tribe, they've uh, been forced out of their native lands. They were once a really powerful nation all on their own, and they got forced out of their native area here into Oklahoma. And then once they came here, they settled on their land, on what was supposed to be land that no one else wanted. And then come to find out, white men decided that they found lead here and uh, zinc. So they started mining that. And basically, if they asked the Quapaw for permission to mine and they said no, then all a white person had to do is go to the Bureau of Indian Affairs and say, hey, this person just isn't fit to... Uh, you know say yes to their land i'm offering to pay rent and they won't and even when they did pay rent they didn't really pay rent they just said they would but there, there are deals that went you know good and right and stuff and this man is kind of proof of that he sold a lot of his mineral rights and became one of the wealthiest men here in the area and this is john beaver he was the second chief of the quapaw and there's a great photo of him here, 1855 to 1928. Old photo of him. Love this marker. You can kind of see some uh, different feather leaves there and flowers and stuff like that. It's a beautiful marker and it even has a planter area in it. And uh, I'm sure at some point they plant flowers in here. Someone's left something here for Christmas but it, it looks like it has fresh potting soil from last year so somebody has planted something here but it is a magnificent piece of art right here like I said he did have a lot of money uh, from what I understand he was buried on his allotted land which is about 15 miles east of here I guess originally and then he was moved here in 1933 and uh, has been here since so absolutely beautiful monument you can tell he's well dressed and i love it now it's considered good luck to place a penny in the cusp of his hands and i can always use luck right good luck so we'll place that up there i can see some other people have done that as well so i am not the only one making that up and uh Beautiful monument though, and it's eye striking. It's the only one like this in the cemetery. But there are other Quapaw um, Native Americans in this cemetery. And uh, now if you don't know the story on what happened to the Quapaw lands, like I said, they were mining lead and zinc. And it's something like 75% of the lead that was used in World War II came from the Pitcher Carden Mines here in Oklahoma. It's not that far away, maybe eight miles from here or so. Um, so we're really close to all that. Unfortunate thing is, is that the mines uh, were overmined, I guess you could say, and pollution started happening from the chat piles getting into the groundwater and it started giving people cancer and stuff like that. So the government bought out the houses that were there of anybody living there in town and offered them money, but it wasn't enough to move somewhere else. Couldn't get a house for what they had or owned or had been passed down. 
So it's a sad story all the way around. It starts with the Quapaw losing their land, but then it goes into various people, whether they're whites or whatever, uh, people that maybe came along later and bought land, you know, from another country that mined in there, Italians or whatever. So anyways, it is a abandoned mine area that is considered uh, toxic and the Quapaw are actively trying to clean it up. And uh, we have done a video over on Sarah's channel, which is called History Happens. Sarah is my wife. And you can see some photos of different structures that are around. A lot of it is disappearing. So some of the stuff we have in that video is no longer around. But I thought this was interesting as well. We have the Bear family here. You can see Karina Bear, 1915 and 1991. And then there's the Burns family. I believe these are all uh, Quapaw right through here. And I think this says bear as well. Yeah, but that's a nice marker. This is all soggy ground. I think they've had a lot of rain, so it's kind of washed up over this. And, uh, but yeah, this is all the bear family through here. This is wet and mushy, but I feel bad leaving it. So wasn't too wet, I guess, but just out of respect, let's get, get that off of Anna B. Hallam's marker, born in Indian Territory and died January 12th, 1971. And like I said, a lot of quapaw through here. This one says uh, crawfish. And you can see a newer one here, 2012. Hopefully I'm not butchering this name, but uh, Seneca black elk matthews 1984 to 2012 his picture is cracked but someone left a christmas memorial here for him and it says admit it life is boring without me seneca and here's an older one 1917 and 1918 clarence Ernest. how much of life how much of joy was buried with our darling joy but like I said, it is it is soggy in here. Try to step over some of this. But you can see this is Pearl White Crow Dukes, 1911 to 1995. And I'd get closer, but I'd, I'd just be up in my ankles in water. And I also don't want to disrespect the graves in front of it or make it sink down in there. But it says, so beloved, so beautiful, so sadly missed by all. And this is... Uh, the father, Mary, his loving, quiet, kindly, kindness, sadly missed by all, 1867 to 1948. Think of the changes that these people have seen uh, in Indian Territory and everything like that. 1886 to 1957, this is Mary, and it says, Mother, her loving, jolly ways, so sadly missed by all. And then this one says... Uh, daughter and mother featherfoot her love smile and laughter so sadly missed by all 1921 to 1984. i'm sure there's a lot of quapaw throughout this cemetery but it is a fascinating cemetery if you're ever in the miami oklahoma area so i just noticed this right across from beaver and then that was bear and that large marker right behind beaver john beaver are some more family members we have that Hallam name that I was clearing off over there that was related to Bear, look like. And so we have Fred L. and then Kenneth Bear Jr. And then here's some bears right here. And a newer marker bear up there. And here's Beaver. So we have Beaver over on this side too. Alex L. Beaver, 1874 to 1956, father. And then Matilda S, 1888 to 1959. Certainly a cemetery you could walk around and spend more time on. And that is an interesting plot there that I'll have in another video if it's not out already. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. I know it was short and sweet, but I appreciate you all watching, sharing, liking, etc. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.